for both of you. It is exactly what Eric is saying, that whether you like it or not, you are definitely indoctrinated into that community. Means you don't get any tickets. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Leverage it? Okay. They're always a great, and we do everything we can for public relations in terms of the police department or any police officer. And uh, what's really great is uh, right now I'm, you know, I was in Vietnam in the Marine Corps, and uh, every day for 13 months I was scared I was going to get killed. But imagine a police officer who's out there in the streets, not for 13 months, but for his career. And vulnerable is an understatement. So I'm sitting right next to my buddy who, by the way, is a real police officer today. God bless him. Yes, I love that. Wait, so tell us a little more about that. When did you actually become a police officer? 13 years ago, I got the opportunity to go to Indiana and become a, a reality show. But let me take you back to when I was four. I grew up in Spanish Harlem. My mother kicked my father out at the age of four because he was stuck on the needle. And then she started dating a cop. The guy's name was Pete Panos. He works CSI downtown. I love the guy. First man I ever loved was a cop. So I was going to be a cop. But at 18, there was this pretty girl named Christine Laporte. It's always a pretty girl. <laughs> and she was into acting. And I said, oh man, I grew up in Harlem. I grew up in the streets. I can act. I'll audition. I'll get in and get the girl. I auditioned. I got in. And I got bit by the acting bug. I no longer wanted to be a New York City police officer even though it was my passion as a kid and my mother. When I told her, Ma, you gotta stay in the projects a little longer. <laughs> she said, ay, papo, no, por favor, mijo, no, no. Tu vas a policía, and we're gonna get out of here. I said, Ma, listen, I love you, but I gotta give it a shot. I really like it, I like this acting thing. It's great, I feel great, I love it, I want more. And then I made a deal with her, I said, look, if I can't make a living, at this acting thing, by the age of 30, I will come back and be eligible to go to Albany and become a New York City police officer because 32 years old is a cutoff date. And uh, you'd be my roommate. I need home more, please. I said, Ma, I gotta do it. So I, you know, got a gig here and there, there, here and there, here and there, and then finally got a steady job, which I needed. And I was chips. So I went ahead and uh, my mother moved her out of Harlem. She never worked again until she passed two years ago. She lived like a champ. She lived better than me. And then um, I, uh, after chips, I was 33 and it, can and it was canceled, it was done. And I realized CHP didn't have any uh, reserves, so I couldn't join them. So I let time go by, I went to Mexico, I did a lot of work around, but blah, 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 reaped the harvest from the popularity of chips. Then, I, then uh, a reality show came up called Armed and Famous 13 years ago, where they took five celebrities and put them through a police academy, full, full academy. And I told my manager, get me in that. I want to see if I still got the passion that I did as a kid to be a cop. I did. And once the show finished, which was only six episodes, we finished. I stayed as a cop there. And then I did that for a while, and then I put in my 99 hours as a reserve there. Well, actually, I was not a reserve at the beginning because I went through the academy, so I became a sworn officer with all rights. Arresting rights, gun rights, the rest of it. I went ahead and um, I would work. <laughs> I would roll up in a house to serve a warrant, domestic, whatever it was. And then when I come out, man, I come out, there are 20 people around my car. I go, folks, this is not a toy gun. This is not, this is not a toy taser. This is real mace. This is real cuffs. Please. Oh, we want a picture punch. <laughs> so you knock it out, you know, get it done. Best thing to do instead of arguing, just knock it out. Then I said, you know what, I can't do this. I gotta, I'm gonna, Next time I come out, I'm going to work graveyard. 12 to 6 in the morning. Jesus. It was the worst. Because <laughs> you hit the bars at least four times. There's always a scuffle. You got to deal with that. You get messed up. Uh, you pull people over, and they give you a line of crap. My God. I'm just stopping you because you got a tail light out. Let me have your license and registration. And you got to run it. 
It's standard procedure. You got a runner. You stop somebody, you got to run it, no matter what. If they got a warrant, they got to go. Standard procedure, and that's the law. So I would get these people that would just bust my chops. Then I get young ladies that were crack addicts and stuff like that. And I would try to Dr. Phil them, and you know, and talk to them about your life. You got children, da 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 da. But they still got to take you down because you got a warrant. Oh. So I take them down to the county to process them. I take this one young lady, real pretty too. I take it down. They pull up her sheets. She got a stack of stuff like that. And I just spent two hours trying to play Dr. Phil. Closer to your mouth. So after that, I said, no more Dr. I said, no more of that, no more Dr. Phil. We're done. You, you got to go. We got to go. I'm put in the car, take it in. So I did all that. And then I said, you know what? I can't do this graveyard stuff. Because two or three o'clock in the morning, somebody was going to mess up my hair real bad. <laughs> so I went out of this. So I uh, got involved with the deputy sheriff, Mike Brown, in Lynchburg, Virginia, Belfort County Sheriff's Department, who ran a foundation called Safe Surfing. And he needed some to make some money to raise the money to make software to promote internet safety education. Five basic rules, nobody's teaching it to our kids. They get groomed and they get taken on the internet as we speak. Some kids get groomed right now. Yep. Okay? They don't teach this in school. So I said, I call them up. Do you share my ground? Yes. I said, sir, my name is Eric Strada. I am a police officer in Muncie, Indiana Reserve. And they go, wait a minute. Is you that fella on the television show with that uniform and the teeth? <laughs> He's a good old boy from the Blue Ridge Mountains, okay? So I say, yes, sir. He said, oh my God, Janet, Janet, come over here. I got me old Pontrelli on the phone here. <laughs> and so I knew I was in. I said, sure, I'd like to lend let my name and likeness and come down and do some public service announcements so we can raise money for your safe search and CDs so you give them to schools so there's no burden on the teachers, the school, the parents, da, 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 da. And we get kids educated. The program is from K to 12, interactive. And we did it. And I met a young lady or two that had been taken prior, 10 years prior, and they did testimonials. We did it. We did it at Pittsburgh University. And then he says, I said, well, I'm going to leave, and thank you very much. And I, all this is on my own back. You know? He says, well, please don't leave yet. Tomorrow morning, let me pick you up at the hotel. And I'm going to take you somewhere. So he takes me to the Brewery's Mountains, to a cabin. I thought that the Walters were still in there. It doesn't look like it. I walk in. No. I, I'm sorry. I walk in, and there are deputy U.S. Marshals, deputies, female, male, and they're on all these big, big screens. And they're in chat rooms. You know, and they're playing 13 years old, Kimmy, whatever the name that they choose. And one of the guys, one of the deputy U.S. Marshals who was in the task force that I ended up joining, says to me, come here. And I see his badge, Deputy U.S. Marshal, sure. I go, I love it. <laughs> he says, sit down. So I sit down. And he types on the computer a four, a Y, and a zero. He says, what's that? I don't know what that is. I didn't know computers then. In the, in the Studio 54 era. I didn't know any of them. I was going to nightclubs. Oh my God. Uh, Eric, the story is great. I'm going to keep us moving, though. No, I don't do something with the fish. Okay, well, I don't know how to go. Because okay. we got other stuff to so I said, what a four and a Y and a zero. And he says, what's that? I said, I don't know. So then he hits another key, and all these IPOs come up. Another screen. Uh, four screens. Total of 457 ID numbers. He says, since we logged on, the four and the Y is zero is for four-year-old pornography. You got 450 people that want to share four-year-old child pornography with you. Well, I went, ooh. And, I, and he says, pick a, pick a, click the key. I said, no, 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 no. I got a six-year-old daughter, no thank you. I don't want to see anything. I didn't come here for that. I came to help the sheriff out and move on. 
He says, sit down. And he clicks one on. He goes, where do you go to Pretty little girl in a white lace dress, black sash, sweetest thing. And then it's a cut, and there are two men on this little girl. That was my introduction to internet, internet crimes against children. I got very upset. Then after you get upset, you get angry. You either go one other way, you either get upset and walk away, or you get angry and get involved. I got involved, and I've been doing it for 13 years now. That is so great. I commend you. I actually so know. Because I, can't say my life. Uh -huh. I commend you.